Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to try and fix a Nintendo Switch. So I used to have the name Switch Killer but that slowly left me because I actually managed to fix up a couple of them. But I'm wondering by the end of this video whether it's going to come back or not because what we have here is a Nintendo Switch which is working but not displaying anything. So if you have a listen, you can hear we have got life there. It appears to charge up and stuff, but it's not displaying anything. Also, it doesn't dock. So with this one here, it was actually previously fixed by myself, which uh, lends the name to Switch Killer again, because even when I fix something, shortly afterwards it may well fail. So what happened was, I bought it off eBay, and I got it on the cheap, because basically the charge port had been replaced, and three of the pads had been ripped off. By the end of my long video on it, I managed to get the display working, but because I had to change so many different chips on it, I ruined one of the connectors that the Joy-Con rail attaches to. So the only way to actually play it was have the Joy-Cons in wireless mode. So although they were attached to here, I had to end up unplugging the other Joy-Con rail as well. So the Switch thought it was in tabletop mode, because otherwise one would be connected and one wouldn't, and it would be confused and not allow you to play like that. So uh, yeah, it's not without its issues. But that isn't really that big a deal because if you've got another switch you can just charge them on that switch or you can buy a separate Joy-Con charger. So it's not really that big a deal, it's just an inconvenience. But it still didn't dock. But it still worked perfectly in handheld mode for a couple of months and then it just went blank. And it's been like that ever since. So I've been meaning to do this for a while, but I've just never got round to it. So I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to see what could be wrong. Maybe it's the video chip that's failed, or maybe it's something to do with the ribbon cable connector. Maybe it's the LCD that's failed, I don't know. So let's take this apart and see basically what's wrong with it. Also, if I get that working, I may possibly think about trying to replace the ribbon cable connector. I say may, I don't know, it depends how long it takes to try and get the screen working. Obviously, if I can't get the screen working, there's no point in even messing around with that. But if I can get the screen working relatively easy, I might try to take a ribbon cable connector off another board and put it on here. I did try in a previous video, but I was heating from the top and it just completely melted. But I could try to heat from underneath, so I'm not actually burning the connector. But the risk of that is that I might end up damaging the components underneath. But look, We'll give it a go, it's all about learning, isn't it? So uh, let's take this apart and see what we find. So I'm just gonna be fast forwarding through the taking apart. Now, to shut it down, I'm just gonna hold down the power button because I can't see the menu to tap the right buttons. So I'm just gonna hold it down for about 15 seconds or so. Okay, so that's all off now. See up here, I can see that it looks burnt. Like so, it looks like it's melted up here, but again, what, what would I have been adding heat for up here? There's no chips up here to my knowledge. So maybe that is some sort of natural uh, fault that's developed there. Right, so this doesn't look good at all. So let's uh, just unclip this. No, that's like welded down. There we go. Right, that's definitely burnt. That's just a bit of dirt there. So the actual I think the connector itself looks okay. Not not the connector, sorry, this ribbon cable. I think that looks okay. So we've got an issue with this here. Well, I think it's best to strip the board down completely, uh, get the board out of it, because uh, either way, we need to do some sort of work here and possible work down here as well. So I'm just going to disconnect the battery and this. take everything out of it. Board out of it now, I'm just going to get a bit of tissue paper just to wipe up the thermal paste, otherwise it will just get everywhere. So we've got it out now, and uh, as far as I can see, the problem's going to be on this connector here. And to be fair, the pins do look okay 
I've just had a look, little look at it through my uh, eye loop here. But what I'm wondering is, when you kind of push it down, this bit is bowed. Can you see it's not straight? So maybe it's not putting enough pressure on the middle pins. Uh, I mean, as far as everything else is concerned, I've just gone across it with my meter here. And there doesn't appear to be any shorts on the capacitors, so they all appear to be okay. There's a slight issue with one of the capacitors down here. It's just standing up a little bit. I'll show you that now. So maybe I can have a look at that. But right, if you look, if I put one lead to uh, a ground, if you have a look here, yeah, just one leg, but look, see that's shorting, and that goes up to this one here, but look, the pad underneath is shorting, but not the capacitor. There's a capacitor there that's just stood up a little bit. So I need to get some air on that just to flatten that down, some hot air. And so here we have this connector here, and if you have a look, when it's pushed down, Oh, there you go, it's just popped out now anyway. I was going to say, when it's pushed down, it's bowed massively. So I think that this is the likely culprit. I think that basically, even when it was pushed down, it wasn't putting pressure on the middle pins. Although it looks burnt over this side, the pins themselves look okay. So uh, I think we need to replace... I think we need to replace this. Now, I have done one of them before, but I found it very, very hard, and I've only done it the once. But I can, uh, I can give it a go. The way I look at it is I haven't got anything to lose. The switch is not working as it is now. It can't be docked and you can't use it in handheld mode. So it's absolutely useless as it stands at the moment. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some captain tape around here. I'm going to put some flux on here. I'm going to use hot air to remove it. And then I think I'm just going to try to solder on the new one. So I'm going to clean up the pads and then just try to add fresh bits of solder on. We'll see how it goes. If it doesn't work... Maybe I can add heat from the other side and just try to place the connector on. But beforehand I did it with the soldering iron and it was took a long time, but uh, it did actually work. So I'm really struggling with this. To begin with, I put the connector too far up this way and basically I couldn't get to any of the pins. And then what I did is I tried to heat them up and push it down. And now basically most of them this side are okay. There's a few in the middle that need doing. But now these ones here, there doesn't really seem to be enough room. So I'm gonna give it another go because there's a tiny bit of pad showing. It's almost as if the connector is just a little bit too you know, like a fraction of a millimetre too thick. If it was thinner, I'd have more pads. But I think what I've done is I've placed it on now too far this way. So it all needs to be pushed up a little bit. But that's not going to happen because I've got too much solder on it now, which is, uh, which is a bit annoying. So I'm going to uh, just keep on at it, and hopefully I might get it this time. If not, I think I'll have to remove this connector and then try, uh, try another one. they all look like they're connected. I've gone through them with the tweezers, just knocking each one. Now, it looks a complete mess, but once I cleaned away all the burnt flux, then uh, this side looks amazing. I'll show you the good side first. When I look through the microscope, this side is really, really nice with a nice lump of solder on each of the pins. This side, not so good, but they are still all they're connected. I've gone across every single one and they're connected. You can see that there's not much there. I'm at the very, very edge of them. While here, 
there's quite a bit left over so it needed to move a fraction of a millimeter this way but I think that's going to be okay now I've had to use a lot of flux here I hope now the inside isn't covered in flux but uh, I've got the IPA on it and given it a good clean uh, yeah I'm uh, I'm actually quite happy with how that's gone it took a, it took a long long time it took a lot longer than I expected and I wouldn't call it easy at all if I had to do another one I think I'd struggle just as much but uh, I think that this one does look better, whether it's going to work or not, I don't know, but I think it looks better than the first one I did. So, uh, yeah, I suppose a little pro bit of progress has been made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this back into the switch now to see if we have any display. And uh, then if we do, I can worry about these other connectors. So let's get this back in. and stuff are back in I won't worry about the speaker down here that's plugged in there let's see if we have anything now no that's not looking hopeful is it no we haven't got anything ah we haven't got anything. I'm sure I've done that connector right though. Let me put a bit of pressure down, see if anything happens. No, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try another LCD, just in case it is that. So let's turn it off again. Alright, okay. I changed the screen and there's still nothing showing on it. And with this one, it's really temperamental. So basically, I'll have to keep disconnecting the battery and then putting it on and then pressing on and sometimes it will come on and sometimes it won't and then if I leave it on for a few minutes it makes that funny sort of noise where it comes up with an error code so I don't know whether that's to do with the board or whether there's something that's that it's not happy about there you go it just made the noise there just made the noise there so uh, yeah I'm not too sure but either way it's still not displaying anyway so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the board out I'm going to sort out this little capacitor that's standing up on its end here because I'm just going to put some I might see if the tweezers can fit in there, if not, do you know what, it actually probably be easier to use hot air because I don't care if these melt anyway, because they're, uh, they're not working. So I'm going to do that and also I'm going to have a look at the video chip. I'm thinking about it, I think I might just try to add some solder to this capacitor or I might just try to heat it up, see if it drops into place and then I can add some solder. Okay, I found that ridiculously hard just because of the size of that tiny capacitor and also it's uh, your solder line keeps sort of bouncing in between the two, it's hard to get lined up. And as well as that, when you use tweezers, they're covered in flux and then the flux just sticks to the capacitor so it just makes it really hard. But, although it looks a mess and it's on its edge, it is actually soldered down. So if I go between the big capacitor here and the side of the small capacitor here, you can hear it shorting and the big capacitor this side and the other side of the small one is shortened so I haven't got to go down to the track anymore so that means the capacitor is in contact with the uh, the track or the trace right so uh, let's now check out this video chip here see what's going on now I'm not saying it is faulty I, I really don't know but the very fact that it's not outputting to the TV and not outputting on the screen makes me think that maybe it's this chip that's faulty so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some flux I'm going to use some hot air and I'm going to take it off and then I'm going to take one from another donor board that I have the donor board that I've got is actually from a water damaged Nintendo switch this was Elliot's from the retro future so I don't even know if this chip is going to be any good or not but I'll swap it over and give it a go I can always put this one back so I just need to make a note that the dot is up in this corner here because I can't actually see oh there we go 
the dot is on the marking of the board here, you see the, the arrow. So let's get some flux on this and take it off. back together and see if it's doing anything different now. Okay, let's see now if it's going to do anything. Right, so I think that's all back together. Here goes. No! Hmm, I wonder what is the matter with this one? It's all pointing towards that connector, isn't it? But I'm confident that connector is on correctly. Unless it's for the flux on the inside, maybe I should clean it again. I can definitely see the backlights on. I'm going to bring it over to the dock, just see if it docks now. No, it's not docking, and also now the fan's kicking in massively because I haven't got a heat sink on. Uh, don't know what to do. The thing that's confusing me ever so slightly is why when I plugged it into this one, did it... Uh, the, I couldn't see the backlight come on, and also it would turn itself off after a few minutes. I'm going to see if I've got a different screen, just in case this might be from a water damage switch, in which case then I don't know anything about this screen. So I tried another LCD, it's still exactly the same thing. You can, uh, it lights up, but there's, there's, there's nothing happening. So it is possible that the video chip that I put on is a bad one because it came from a water damage switch. This is a problem when you're constantly using spares from damaged switches. You sort of lose track of what's faulty, what's not faulty. Also, I don't know on that water damage one exactly how many chips were, were wrong, were bad. But uh, I don't know. It's strange that beforehand it was working, then it just stopped working. It didn't suffer any water damage, or I didn't drop it or anything. It just, you know, just stopped working. I seen that there was like a burn on the LCD. Thought it was that. Fitted the connector. To me, that connector all looks good. And I've gone across with my multimeter between the pins and these top ones, and they are shorting. But saying that, because it's so small, my needle off the multimeter are actually touching the pins rather than the pads. So uh, unless I was to get a tiny little needle, I might be able, but even a tiny needle is still going to end up hitting the pins because this is so tiny. Uh, I don't really know what to do. I'm going to check the capacitors again, see if I can see anything obvious. And uh, yeah, once I find out what it is, I'll start up the filming again. Everything looks okay. I can't see anything wrong. So I'm going to take off this charge chip here. I do remember hearing ages ago this, this had something to do with the... Uh, the display as well whether that's right or wrong I haven't got a clue that was ages ago when I heard that but I'll take it off and see what happens I'll be just fast forwarding through the rest of this video now until I find out what's wrong difference still exactly the same so I'm just going to keep working on it now I might change the video chip out again and then uh, either way whether it's working or not working I'll finish up the video so I'm still not getting anywhere but I did notice that one of the pins are loose on the end of the USB port so I might as well sort that out I'm pretty sure the last one is ground but I'm going to just solder them up anyway there's a whole row of hidden pins but I'm going to just uh, work with these ones that's exposed
Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and change out the USB port because I'm losing on absolutely everything I do. So by changing out the USB port, I might be able to fix the traces and then I might be able to get it in docked mode working and that will just give me some little glimmer of hope because I've wasted now more than half a day on this so far. see one two three four five I can actually f see five missing pads this one this one this one this one this one and if I go on to the ground here then they're definitely not ground so I suppose that would suggest why the docking is not working but that shouldn't affect the actual display coming out of the uh, screen now I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this I think I might just try to put a thick wire down there, 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 and there, and then there. Then it might, I might be able to solder the pins onto that. Annoyingly, this is on the hidden one, so it's going to be pretty much impossible to do. Uh, I can't even go the other side because some of these wires are not coming up the other side. They must be going to the, remember this is a multi-layer board, so they must be going to other layers in the middle of the board. So yeah, sort of losing hope on this now. I'll give it a go, I'll spend a bit of time on it, see if I can do anything. done is I've extended out the wires from the wires going down it looks like they're touching those ones but they're not and I'm going to struggle to put solder on here so what I'm going to do is I've just put some solder on these ones here and then I'm hoping by heating it up it will all melt together that's my plan anyway you can see now on this bit here that I've put all the wires in but they're obviously bigger than the actual pads so now what I've had to do is where the actual wires are I've had to then the other pads up so the wires are going to be lying flat and then the ones on the pads I've bent up so then hopefully that will uh, still still make a contact because obviously the wires are thicker than the pads. Right, so that's it back in place. Now, that was really hard because what happened was because of the wires on the inside, it's pushed everything up. So basically, I've actually just put loads of solder in here to build it up because the pins are too high. Also, this bottom one here was missing as well. Now, this is a ground, but I still wanted to connect it because the pin itself wasn't being ground. It looks like it's being ground through the board rather than, uh, you know, short into this. So uh, just in case it's important. So I'm going to put it back together. I mean, the odds of the pins on the inside having connected are very, very, very slim, especially because there was five of them. But still, I'll give it a go. I haven't got the heat sink in, but you can see now that the light's nice and bright, but there's still no display on here. But watch, it does it does dock. It's just very, uh, it's a bit hit and miss because this port here is quite bent up. But look, check this out now. So put it in there. Right, one second now, let me just get it in properly so the light goes out. I've got to keep my hand down on it. Right, let's see if it comes up, there you go. It is now up on the TV, I've connected up the Pro Controller. There we go. And there it is. So excellent, so it is now docking, so it was definitely the USB C port that was stopping it from docking. I would love to know why I can't get it to display. But now, that is great, that's giving me more hope now. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep working on it. I also need to clean out the port a little bit because when I put it in and out, it's very hard to, it's very hard, it doesn't really want to. I mean, if you look at the green light down here, watch this. So you can see the light comes on here. You kind of have to force it down. 
the green light's on now. Let's see if it's on the dock. Yes, it has. Excellent. So I suppose just a few more times in and out, we'll just clean it up a bit. I've probably got flux and all sorts in there. But that's uh, that's really good. That's brilliant. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep working on this and just keep trying to find out what it is with that display because I'm happy that that connector is fully connected. I've gone across both lots of pins, the top and bottom, many times and I can't see any of that are wobbling or anything. But I'm thinking it must be something to do with that connector. That's the most obvious choice, but... I mean, what do I do? Take it off and put it on again? Not sure. What I might do is I might try and get some very sharp needle or something with some crocodile clips and actually see if each of the pads are connecting to the pins. I think that's what I might try and do. But we're definitely making some sort of progress at long last. Change this connector yet again. I didn't really think there was a problem with the other one because it looked like it was all testing okay, but I couldn't really properly get to these pads because there was so little of them showing. But now, if you have a look, can you see it's in the middle of them? So I'm confident now I've gone across every single pin and none of them are moving and every one of them are connected. So let's put it back together now and see if we have any display. Right, so I've changed that connector exactly the same as before. Really strange. So you can see here that the switch is actually on and it is lit up, but yet there's uh, no display, just like before, but I'm pretty sure it should still dock. Kind of running out of options now. I think I'm just gonna have to probably leave this just as a dockable switch. Okay, so I've got partial success. It's working on the TV, but it's not working on the actual switch itself, which is really confusing for me because I've swapped the LCD out and it's not that. I've swapped the connector for the LCD twice, and this second time, 100%, that is definitely working. So it's not that. I mean, I was almost certain that it was working first time, but there was just a little bit of doubt in my mind because I couldn't see all the pads. I've swapped the video chip twice, I've swapped the main charging chip, and I've also swapped that little chip down the bottom, which is also, I think, something to do with charging. So, uh, what else is there left to do? I've also checked all the little filters. So after the, the video chip, you have about five lots of filters, which I believe are for the HDMI out for the TV, because it looks very similar to the PlayStation 4 and also the Xbox. And as well as that, I noticed that there's a load of filters up the top just before the, uh, the screen connector. So basically they must be the filters for the screen. I've checked all them and there's continuity through them and they're not shorting. These little filters here, so what I've done is I've checked for continuity between that one there and that side there and that side there and that side there and make sure that there's no shorts across them. So there's one, two, three, four, five there. And if you flip it over here, this is obviously just a donor board. If you have a look up by the connector here, can you see there's more filters here? One, two, three, four, five. So it looks like, and these all wiggle their way along to these end connectors here. So I think what's happening is, out of the video chip, they go through the filter and then through the USB-C port to provide the output to the TV. And I think in this instance, that these filters come from this chip here, because I can see the traces wiggling up, and I think that they go along to this part here to do the output for the actual, or to filter the output to the actual screen. So basically, I do not know what it could be. Swapping the LCD out made no difference. Uh, I mean, what is there left? I really haven't got a clue unless there's some sort of broken trace somewhere. But the problem is, it was working beforehand. On the last video, I had the switch working in handheld mode, but not on TV. And now, because I've sorted out the USB-C port, I've got it working on TV, but I haven't got it working on the switch. So I can't see how it can be a trace. Uh, because I haven't been, you know, 
it, it just stopped working when it was all closed up, so I can't see how a trace would have been damaged. The only thing I can think of is could it be the main chip, you know, the APU, the, the system on chip thing, because those filters that go up to the screen are definitely going into the main chip. So maybe something happens to the main chip where everything's working apart from one or two of maybe the lines that are going to the connector for the screen. That's all I can think. But you can see there it's working fine. I've got it on mute just so uh, you can hear me talking, but if I take it off mute, you will hear that it's working fine there. And yeah, but yeah, let me show you the actual switch itself. So watch this. I take it out. Okay, you can hear loads of sound, loads of music, but absolutely nothing. Isn't it weird? And then when I pop it back in, it now consistently does work on the TV. Yeah? So if anybody knows what the problem is, please tell me, because I would love now, I've spent basically three quarters of a day on this, I would love to know what the problem is, and I would love to get it working again, just uh, just in, in, in the quest of knowledge. So if you think it could be a problem with the main chip, put it down in the comments down below. If you've had this problem, I've Googled it, I couldn't find out any information about it apart from send it back to Nintendo. So uh, it's obviously not a common problem, but uh, if, if you've come across this and you know what it is, please put it down in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, I'll definitely revisit this. As far as I'm concerned, it's great that it's working on the TV because it can just be a dot switch, you know, for example, uh, just using it with a pro controller. I didn't bother messing around with the Joy-Con rail connector because there was no need because you can just use it with a Pro Controller if you want to charge up your Joy-Cons, you can just charge it up elsewhere. But if I do revisit it, and if I can get the screen working, I would love to have a go at fixing the Joy-Con rail connector as well by heating it up underneath the board uh, so I don't melt the plastic because uh, I haven't tried doing that yet, so that would be quite interesting. But so uh, yeah, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more China Fix videos. Take care, bye now.